Hey again. Um, today, uh, about acid and base chemistry, we're going to be talking about the differences of what is a strong and a weak uh, acid and base. So, the term strong and weak um, relate to how much ionizes in, in solution. So, let's take a look at some strong acids here. So, uh, hydrochloric acid and hydrobromic acid are strong acids. So what does that mean is that uh, when you take HBr or HCl, 100%, so all of it, so when you have HBr, all of it is going to turn into H plus ions and Cl minus ions. Okay? It's all going to ionize. And since all of it ionizes, we call it uh, strong. It's a strong acid. Now, weak, weak just means does not completely ionize and therefore forms an equilibrium. So right here we have uh, methanoic acid in water and what we see is that only some of it for right here, this is the this is the H that, this is the hydrogen or the proton that is going to be lost or donated and since, since um, only a small portion of these protons are going to leave the methanoic acid, uh, it doesn't completely ionize and therefore we call it weak. Okay? And what happens is it's going to be forming this HCOO minus and this HCOO minus is going to combine with H3O plus and it's going to form HCOOH and this is going to turn this and we have like a forward reaction of ionizing and then we also have this reverse reaction of making uh, HCOOH again and therefore it's weak. So on a question sometimes you can have something like uh, HCl and you'll have uh, HCOOH and it'll say uh, HCl has a concentration of oh, 1 times 10 to the minus 4 molarity and this has a concentration of uh, let's just make some number up of 2.0 molarity so much 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 bigger than HCl and then we'll say, well, this has a pH of maybe uh, about 4. Okay? And this would have a pH of probably something like uh, 1.7 maybe. Who knows? Okay, so the pH is it's, it's seeming to be much, much more acidic. Okay, so all the signs are pointing towards that HCOOH is, uh, is stronger, but that is not what the definition of strong means. It is still, this one is still a strong acid, and this one is still a weak acid. So even though this has a higher concentration and a pH that is much, much lower, it is still considered weak. And even though this pH is much higher and the concentration is very, very low, this is still considered to be strong. And the reason why, again, is because, well, hydrochloric acid 100% ionizes in water. And methanoic acid does not 100% uh, ionize in water. And therefore, this will form an equilibrium this will not form an equilibrium. So what can we say is that um, this, this is quite concentrated. It has a relatively high molarity or a relatively high concentration and therefore this is concentrated and this is quite dilute. Okay, Very very low molarity and um, is, it's very very dilute. Okay. So a lot of people get these words confused. They think concentrated and strong are the same meaning, and it's not. This means 100% ionization. This means high.
high molarity. Low molarity for dilute, and weak just means not 100% ionization. Okay, so we're also uh, given um, what is called the bronsted lowry acid and base chart, or it just tells us the relative strengths of all these acids and bases. Now, let's talk about uh, strong again. So, we're going to look at uh, strong acids, and we see here shaded in gray right here are the strong acids, and all of this in white are weak. These are all weak and here, down here in gray, are strong bases, and we'll talk about those later. But let's take a look at these strong, uh, strong acids a little bit more closely. Okay, so we're going to take a look right up here. Again, strong acids, and we have uh, six of them per chloric. Uh, hydroidetic, hydrobromic, hydrochloric, nitric acid, and sulfuric acid. Okay, so let's take a look at these um, strong acids. Okay, so here are, um, uh, just we just zoomed in on uh, some of these strong acids right here, and what we see is that they have a, a Ka value. So we have a Ka value that is, uh, well, it just says very large here. And for these ones, these are weak acids, and therefore they have an actual number. Now let's look at why this says very large, and this is, gives us an actual number. So if you remember, Ka, Keq, Ksp, they're all pretty much the same thing. Um, and let's write uh, a formula for, um, let's, let's pick hydrochloric acid. So here's HCl, and as we know, HCl is a strong acid, okay? And it's signified by this arrow right here. It's only going to be moving in one direction, and therefore it's going to make H plus and Cl minus. Now you can also write this formula by, since it does take place in water, you can also write it this way. Um, HCl plus water makes H3O plus plus Cl minus. Now let's write some subscripts here. So HCl, this is aqueous. H2O, that's a liquid, aqueous, and aqueous. Now, let's write our Ka, or which is very, very similar to Keq. And as we know, Keq, or Ka, is going to equal the concentration of the products over concentration of reactants. Okay? So, our Ka is going to equal H3O plus times our concentration of chloride divided by now, H2O is a liquid, so we do not put it into our, our KEQ or KA uh, expressions. But this is aqueous, we can put it over here. So HCl. Now, l let's take a look at this, at this question. When this dissolves, when HCl, um, when HCl is added to water, it's going to create a number here. It's going to create a concentration of H3O plus, and it's also going to create a concentration of Cl minus. Now, 100% of this is going to ionize. So, 
like after this is all mixed in and everything like that, HCl here is going to be have a concentration of zero. Okay, so this is going to have a concentration of zero, and this is going to have a concentration of X, and this is going to have a concentration of X. So your Ka for a strong acid is going to be X squared over zero. Since it's over zero, that is a number that is approaching infinity. Or in other words, a number that is very large. Okay? So that's why all strong acids have a Ka value that is very large. Now these ones don't have a Ka value that is very large. The reason being is because, well, they're not, they're not strong. Okay? So let's take a look at um, something like uh, oxalic acid. So for this one, you'd have something like uh, it says H2C2O4 plus water, and that forms an equilibrium. Okay, it forms an equilibrium and makes H3O plus and HC2O4 minus. Now, this when this ionizes. This is going to cause a forward reaction, okay? And when it creates this, this forward reaction goes, this is going to have a certain concentration, and this will also have a certain concentration. And this started with a certain concentration, okay? It started with a certain concentration that we don't know. We'll just call it Y. And then some of it has ionized and became this. It would be something like Y minus X. And as we can see here, you can get a number there. That this is this is going to equal something like this. Okay? And this is not infinity. Well, at, at 25 degrees, this number right here equals 5.9 times 10 to the minus 2. Okay? So I could also I kind of skipped a step right there but it would equal H3O plus, which is an X, HC2O4 minus, which is also another X, and then this, this is not 100% ionizing, so it is not zero. Uh, instead, it's going to be what I just wrote down, Y minus X, or But as you can see here, it's not zero, and therefore you get a number which is equal to 5.9 times 10 to the minus 2. So again, these are all strong. Strong acids. And these ones are Weak, weak acids. Okay, now um, let's move on. So again, uh, right here, I wrote down. Um, Acids, acids and bases always take place in water, and acids make what is called uh, the hydronium ion or the hydrated proton H3O plus, and bases make OH minus. So, how can we use this to make uh, to write down our acids and bases? So again, so for something that's strong right here, like nitric acid HNO3, this is only going to have a forward reaction. No reverse reaction is possible. You cannot have H plus combined with NO3 minus to make HNO3. Okay, it's not possible. 
it is only going to have a forward reaction right there. Now these ones are possible. This can have a reverse reaction. Okay. So again, when you write um, an acid like this, we often have to make sure that it writes with water. Uh, so again, let's do iodic acid here. So HIO3 and try to stay in the habit of writing these things with water. Now on this table it doesn't write it with water, but it's good practice to write it with water. Okay. Now, if I were to take this same reaction and let's say if instead of having this forward reaction, I want to write a base of this reaction. So I was given a sample of NaIO3 minus. So let's write it down here. So I'm given a sample of NaIO3 minus. Now, if this was put into water, okay, this is going to form oops, sorry, no minus right here or here. Um, but if I had NaIO3 minus and it's put into water, it's going to form Na plus uh, plus now the IO3 minus the IO3 minus is going to take away one of these protons from water and it's going to form HIO3 and this is going to form uh, OH, leave an OH minus, a hydroxide ion. Now as we see here this is aqueous right here so this sodium is a spectator ion. Okay, This is going to be an Na plus here so this sodium is a spectator ion so we can get rid of this sodium. So if I was to say we had sodium, uh, we had NaIO3 um, and we place that into water, what kind of reaction would happen? And what you should write is that, well, since sodium is a spectator ion, you wouldn't write it into the reaction. So you just write IO3 minus plus water, and that makes uh, H. IO3 plus a hydroxide ion. Okay, so this would be how you would write the base form of this. Okay, so IO3 minus plus water. So Bases will always make uh, an OH, and acids will always make an H3O+. So, um, so like we talked about iodic acid there, we can see that this is what we call, um, here is the uh, acid and here is the base and we call these conjugates again if you remember a conjugate acid and base pair is something that differs by only one proton so HIO3 and IO3 minus the only difference between these two things is that one proton or in other words that one H plus okay so here's a conjugate pair and if we see here if we're uh, if something has a if the iodic acid is is quite relatively strong, so iodic acid is much much stronger than these acids down here. Okay, and we can see that from right here, uh, the strength of an acid, and the farther up we go, the the stronger it is compared to down here. So iodic acid is a stronger acid than 
these acids down here. And we can also tell that it's a stronger acid than these acids because also of this Ka value. Well, it's a, it's a number that is, that, is getting, that is larger than these numbers. But we'll talk more about that in another lesson. So again, if something has a relatively strong uh, conjugate acid, then its conjugate base is going to be relatively quite weak. And as we see here, the strength of a base increases going down. And the strength of the acid increases going up. Okay, and strength of the base increases going down. Okay, so this is how we can say iodic acid is a stronger acid than something like phosphoric acid, and that is stronger than benzoic acid, which is stronger than, and you get the idea. Now, uh, the same thing can be done right here. Uh, relatively strong bases are on the bottom right side. So, right here, um, PO43 minus is a very strong, oh, sorry, a relatively strong base compared to HS minus, and that's a strong base compared to SO42 minus. Now remember, I say, when I say it's a strong base relative to, that means it's just stronger than one of these ones. These are still, everything in this lot, this box right here, everything in here is weak. Everything here in white is weak. Now we can compare which one is stronger, but they are all weak um, because they all have uh, Ka values that are that are numbers. Now these ones are the what is actually strong by definition. Okay? So strong acids have weak conjugate bases. Okay? And then the opposite is also true. Weak bases, so up here is a weak base, has a relatively strong acid. Okay? So stronger acid, the stronger the acid, the weaker the conjugate base and also and vice versa. And vice versa, which means the opposite. Now, uh, so which one is stronger of these strong acids is by this thing here, it says strength of an acid and it says perchloric acid, it looks like it's stronger than something like hydrochloric acid. So HClO4 looks like it's stronger than HCl because it's higher up here. But since what you, what you should be doing is comparing these Ka values. And these Ka values are, well, they're the same. So these are all have the same strength when in water. Okay? And we call that the leveling effect. Okay, so the leveling effect says all strong acids have the same strength because they all 100% ionize. So all of these are the same, same strength. Just like here they have the, the same strength, they're all very, very low.